two, one. You are watching Tipping Off the Cuff on TequilaAficionado.com. I'm Alex Perez. I'm Mike Morales, and uh, we have this evening Alex Don Fermin Tequila. Look at look at the presentation on that. Show them, show them your, your box, too. Look at the box that that thing came in. Wow. Check it out, man. No mistake, it's a plata. It's a plata. Now, the, here's, a, here's a little controversy on, on this brand. Some of you may have seen or have read uh, or heard of the, um, the reality show called Tequila Sisters. And this, this played er, late last year. Or, or, in English? Or it's, a, it's in Spanglish. Tequila Sisters. Anyway, it turns out that the father, who's the father of these four sisters uh, in one in one show they they were showing they, they caught a glimpse of this tequila but that's not the tequila that he is wanting to produce and promote with the sisters because it's about the family and they so happen to own a tequila brand well is it, it, is it a reality? yeah it's a re, it's a reality show it's a reality show they we contacted them over Twitter um, you know, we, we liked them on Facebook. Uh, we, we were in, co in contact with one of the sisters. So they, each of them have their own account, plus the show has its own Twitter account. Anyway, somebody noticed this bottle, and we tracked it down. And it, it, there, the story goes that the, the father is the former importer of Don Fermin. And um, he has had financial difficulties. And somewhere along the line, the, the brand owners in, in Mexico got a little ticked off. And um, the father is no longer the importer of this brand. We were contacted by the new importers called Glass Bottom Distributors. They're, they're out of uh, Pico Rivera. And uh, they said, we are not the owners of the brand, Tequila Don Fermin. We are the exclusive importer and distributor of the brand in the state of California. Uh, the family is 50% owner of the distillery that produces Don Fermin, known 1489. Uh, they also produce Casa Dragones and Republic Tequila. Republic has, has moved a couple of distilleries, and they wound up at this distillery. Now, the other controversy, Alex, like there's, there's not enough controversy with this tequila. The other controversy is that that distillery is known to have a diffuser, which the process of a diffuser, we, we actually have a blog post on the diffuser. There was a long conversation that we had. A, we had a Twitter chat with uh, Ruben Aceves of Herradura uh, earlier this month in May. And they cleared, clarified for us that they have a diffuser and what they, in which brands they use it for. They don't use it for Herradura anymore, they claim. But uh, this distillery, uh, Gnome 1489, has a, has a diffuser. And Casa de Dragones has been, has been accused of being used as being a diffuser tequila, which by its by its virtue of what it is, it strips the character from the agave, which is when you and I did the tasting, you know, it's, it's all very food forward and very subtle, very, very downplayed. And I asked Humberto Ibarra, who is the, uh, the owner of Glass Bottom, one of the, one of the, um, one of the founders of the, of the company, I said, do they use a diffuser when they do Don Fermin? And he said, no. He said that the owners of the brand refuse to use a diffuser for this tequila. So we have pros, we have cons. We have, we have the owners telling us that they're not using a diffuser, and we have people who accuse this distillery of using diffuser for everything. So tonight, Alex, we're going we're gonna to put it through our palates and see if we can discover whether it's diffuser tequila or whether it's, uh, you know, whether it's worth a darn here. So um, I love the color. It's, it's, it's bright. It's a bright, it's a bright Blanco. Yeah, bright, colorless Blanco. 
It's got the nice legs to it. Yeah, it's beautiful the way it lays in the glass. Yeah. Yeah, very nice. Not too runny, not too sticky. Nice, it's got a fresh, fresh nose. Yeah, it's, uh, there's not much in the way of, um, of flavor notes. You know, we didn't get any real POS with it. Um, although the packaging, you know, um, we, I, I would, I would use some of this packaging for, for flavor notes, but, um, it's Destiladora Leros, the, the name of the distillery. 1489. It's a subtle nose. Yeah, it's got a real subtle nose. I can get the roasted agave a little deep in the glass. Nothing really pops out. No, no, you have to dig for it, for sure. on the entry. Mm -hmm. Nice and smooth. Nice mouthfeel, good structure to it. There's a nice Palette. sweetness to it. Yeah. What what it what you don't get on the nose, it really delivers on the palate. And it's got a good finish too. It's got a nice long finish. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, apparently the, 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 the story goes, that I'm reading the notes here, that uh, distillery, distillery Leiros is uh, currently the sixth largest distillery in Jalisco. And initially when the distillery was built by its two founders, one had a background in, in agave cultivation and the other one um, uh, in tequila logistics. And they both set out to build a distillery that produces only high quality tequilas. Uh, they were uh, they were known as maquiladoras. Um, Leros decided to produce their own brand, and that's when the premium tequila Don Fermín was born. So this is the flagship brand of the distillery, which explains why they probably I I don't I don't taste you know I've had enough salsa and 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 ornitos to know what a diffuser tequila is like. This doesn't, at least this one doesn't. I'm not sure about Casa de Raiones because it was so subtle. Um, this is a nice blanco. Yeah, it doesn't deliver on the nose a whole heck of a lot, but on the flavor profile, it really, really pops, and it's got a long finish to it. And you do get that that agave. There's an agave aftertaste. There is. I, I'm. I'd imagine they have autoclaves. I, I don't. I don't. I don't believe that this is a, a an oven baked agave. Yeah, I would. Like it. Yeah, but I will tell you, Alex, I like the look. I like the presentation. I think as, as far as brand of promise for packaging, I think we should we should definitely keep an eye on this one. I would nom nominate this for packaging, just packaging alone. I mean, there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of money going into this into this into this brand here. Um, and there's a lot of pride. I, I can tell, you know, this is a substantial bottle. Uh, it, you know, it's got the, the agave molding in it, um, as you can see, and uh, nice, you know, a nice topper. Um, 
I, uh, I, 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 I almost want to go brand of promise in flavor, but, but I don't know. I, you know, I'm not, I don't know. You know, I, I, what do you think? You know what? I, it, it's great on the palate. It's a really nice sipper. I'm, I'm disappointed in the nose. Yeah, me too. It doesn't, it doesn't give me the full experience. You know, the full experience is, is what it looks like in the glass, the nose, the bouquet, and then, and then the pow in the mouth. So, so we, we got two out of three. We got two out of three. Yeah, we got two out of three. And, and so that, that just, you know, and, and maybe it, maybe it's on purpose. We'll know when we do the reposado, which is coming up next in our next episode uh, of sipping off the cuff. But for now, it, it is definitely a, 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 a sipper, definitely worth looking for. Um, it, you can find it now in, in all over California and probably Southern California specifically. Um, I know that they're growing the brand. Uh, I'm, in, I'm in close contact with the, with the uh, glass bottom distributors. They've been really forthcoming with information. Uh, I asked them specifically, are they using a diffuser for this brand? And, and he went back, asked the owners, and just about had his, had his butt chewed off because <laughs> they're not. And, and I, don't, I don't feel that they are. Uh, I, I think, uh, I think I would, like you, I, I had hoped it would deliver more on the nose. Um, that, great tequila. Yeah, it, it, once, once you get it past the lips, though, you're not going to be disappointed. And it's got a nice long finish. Uh, I'm sure it would be great in your cocktails. It would be a nice, easy sipper. You might even want to do this on the rocks. If you're one of those guys who drinks, you know, uh, Blancos on the rocks, you could do that too. So keep an eye out for it. I would say Brand of Promise nominee for packaging. Look at that packaging. Nice. Definitely. Very nice. Nice I am Mike. I, what was that? It almost looks like a cognac bottle. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, you, you, you want to you wanna keep this around as a decanter for sure and probably fill it up with more Don Fermin or, or, or their, the, the stable mate, which is Senda Real, which you and I did in our previous, uh, our, our previous tastings that, that hasn't been uh, aired yet um, from these guys. But uh, anyway, that's our take on, on Don Fermin. I'm Mike Morales. I'm Alex Perez. You're watching Sipping Off the Cuff on TequilaAficionado.com. And as always, sip wisely.